Hi, I'm Brianna Jones, a junior here at Mays High School. I'm Antoine Ray, also a junior here at Mays High School. And I'm Victor Williams, a senior here at Mays High School. Today we will take you inside the places where the youngest Atlanta public school students get their start. We're focused on the pre-K program. APS Today starts now. Welcome to APS Today. Do you hear that? Maybe you should stop by the pre-K Mandarin Chinese class at Tumor Elementary School in the Kirkwood community. It has been really amazing to see how quickly they pick up the, the foreign language um, and make those connections and understand that you know, initially they answer in English and then quickly switch to Chinese for each new concept. So um, they do a lot of the same things that we do in our classroom. So we do, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And so they learn that first in Chinese. And then you know, building that um, from there you know, with the colors. And we use a lot of the same resources. Tumor is home to the only elementary Mandarin Chinese program in Georgia. A lot of it in pre-K is receptive language. You know, they are understanding everything that they hear, and so they demonstrate an understanding as opposed to articulating an understanding. But still, it's a very complex process that goes on to get from, you know, just hearing it to responding. So I think that it's preparing our children to think critically, to listen, obviously, um, to problem solve, and then to communicate better. Shelly Ward is looking forward to the day when her toddler can join big sister Haven at Tumor. She says the Chinese classes are a real draw. I think that's the perfect time to start them with, as they're learning the English language as well as the, the Mandarin language. And I'm very excited about it. I want a whole family to take a class. This is a great opportunity for Haven to be exposed to the classroom environment, number one. Number two, is this, it's free. <laughs> So, you know, dishing out all the money for $200 a week or however much you pay for it for child care, um, mm -hmm. it was a big plus for our income, especially in this uh, economy. Everything we do is really hands-on. So when um, people walk in, what might look like play is um, very educational learning. In pre-K, we don't limit how long they stay somewhere. We feel like if they're working on a skill, if you're building with blocks, um, you're working on math skills and geometry and spatial um, development. And so if you need to spend 20 minutes there, if you need to spend an hour there, that's your time to work on that. If you hop from blocks and go to writing and you're working on your letters and holding your pencil in your grasp, um, those are all things that those kids need to work on um, and they do it at their own pace and with their own exploration. But then we have also teacher-directed time, which is where we get to give a little more guidance. Sherry Alexander was exposed to early learning when she entered the Head Start program as a young child. She and her husband are thrilled with the results that their daughter Selena is bringing home from Tumor. Now she's in the early development of reading just with the uh, suggestions that Miss Casey has made as far as like instead of buying them um, toys or dolls or whatever for Christmas, she was like, go out and get them the introduction to learning to bingo. They think it's a game, but it's actually teach them how to read and identify letters and numbers. And so some of the things that she's learned with playing the game, she's also taking it to the classroom and Miss Casey's able to actually show me that she does know how to read. So I thought she was just memorizing the books. What are they bringing home now that's letting you know kind of what's going on here in the school? Oh, well, if I may, this is one little simple sample that I had when I visited her class and she showed me that she had two different colors that she meant to make this one color and she asked me to make sure that I hold on to it. It's just the little things that they do. It, it's mind-blowing to me, the pictures, just to see how they're growing, how they're developing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's really exciting. 
our parents have told us, you know, they're surprised in such a big environment that their kids feel so comfortable. So um, we're really proud of how we have made it a nurturing environment. Even though the facility is sort of large, we've made it so that the kids feel warm and comfortable and, and cared for. And the parents have, have told us that they feel the same way too. Just a few blocks away from Tuman Elementary School is another special APS community partnership that nurtures children almost from the time of their birth. My dad was Dr. George Brumley, and he was a pediatrician at, the, um, at Emory, um, the Department of Pediatrics, and he um, started um, thinking about retiring and couldn't figure out what he wanted to do, knew he wanted to give back to the, commu to the community, a, a greater community of Atlanta in some way. And so um, his platform had been health, and so he started thinking about areas of Atlanta that were underserved and had a lot of, um, um, the children weren't reaching their potential. And so he did some research and he found this neighborhood and realized that there was a lot of um, need here and um, decided that health being his platform, the first thing he would start with was a, um, a school-based health clinic. And from Dr. Brumley's vision, the Whiteford Community Program was born. We have uh, pediatricians, we have a dentist um, on staff, as well as social workers, so we're providing comprehensive primary health care, as well as an array of after-school programs for kids to make sure that they're going to do well in school. But also we provide uh, family training and literacy for the adult family members. The Whiteford Child Development Program begins serving babies at six months old. At four years, they're ready to cross the street and begin pre-K on the campus of Whiteford Elementary School. These pre-K lead teachers have earned at least an associate's degree, and the average staffer has been with the center for eight years. Whiteford parent LaTwain Butler has one child in the child development program, one in the pre-K, and one in the elementary school. She first noticed the impact of pre-K when her oldest son entered the first grade. The kids that came from the Whiteford program were all A students. All the kids were on the and had straight A's. The transition, I know, is going to be much easier for the students and the parents because that uh, initial feeling of wondering what will happen, will my baby get lost, well, you know, it's not there because they're very comfortable with the school. Whiteford Elementary School is the only school in the state to be named a 2010 National Excellence in Urban Education winner by the National Center for Urban School Transformation. Next, we'll take you to Kimberly Elementary School, located in southwest Atlanta, where we will meet a longtime early childhood educator who serves as a mentor to our new generation of pre-K educators. In 1995, when Georgia became the first state in the nation to offer free pre-K to all four-year-olds, Gladys Carter had already been honing her skills as an early childhood educator for some time. Eighteen years into her career, she still looks forward to starting each day. I like being with the children, and uh, I like working with the parents, and I just love my job, and I try to do my job well. Mrs. Carter is also a valuable mentor to the next generation of teachers. My favorite part of the day as a pre-K teacher would be small group. I believe because that's when I have time to focus on a group of children and see where the strength and weakness are and we can develop different activities and play different games to help that student. And once I see that that student is excelling in, in a subject or in the topic or the game, I love to see it on their face. A grant from the Rollins Center for Literacy at the Atlanta Speech School has provided innovative professional development this year for the Kimberly Pre-K staff. It really helps me out as a better teacher by introducing me to new activities and things that helps me think outside the box with the children. Kimberly has been awarded the literacy grant for next year as well. Parents may not be aware of the behind-the-scenes staff training, but Kalima Robertson says the teachers made it comfortable to ease her son Timothy into school. His transition was great. I think the, the worst was for me and my husband. He was ready to start pre-K. He had already met Ms. Carter and Ms. Collins, so he was familiar with everyone here. So he was excited. It was me, mom, crying and, you know, trying to relinquish and let him go. But he was happy. 
They're very family oriented. They keep me updated on everything that's going on. The resources that they have available to me as a parent, workshops and just different things that I can attend to better my skills as a mom and my husband as a dad. The resources that they have here, it's absolutely phenomenal. I tell the teachers here every day, I'm like, I could not have made a better choice. Some of the uh, parents will call and say, is Miss Carter still there? But it, it just does my heart. And that's just what I do. That's just part of me. I love what I'm doing. And I think when I stop loving the children, then it's time to go home. But right now, I love what I'm doing, and I'm continuing to do what I'm doing. Atlanta Public Schools Pre-K Lottery Registration will be held on April 16th, April 21st, and April 23rd. For more information, call 404-802-3638 or visit us on the web at atlantapublicschools.us. Did you know that First Lady Michelle Obama recently visited one of our Atlanta public schools? The First Lady talked to the students at Burgess Peterson Academy about good nutrition and healthy eating. <laughs> First Lady Michelle Obama was enthusiastically but politely greeted by the students in Megan Kaiser's second grade classroom, each of whom had been waiting patiently for her arrival. Can you, can we, can you, uh, can we be on Disney Channel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, well, well, I'll have to discuss that with Disney. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Did they have the yeah. well, you have okay. a question, What's your question? I saw you on Disney Channel, yeah. and I wanted to say that you had a great speech about having kids and um, adults to be healthy. That's good. So what what did you guys take from what you saw on Disney? What did, what did you learn? Or what are you learning here? All right, let's let, let's healthy let's food. Say that again. Baby. We had um, healthy food. Mrs. Obama listened attentively as the students discussed the importance of good nutrition and healthy eating, which is one of the important lessons taught at Burgess Peterson Academy and the main reason the First Lady selected the school to visit. You know who loves figs? You. The president. Oh. That's his favorite snack, figs, or one of his favorites.